Uh, yep, Doc Mitchell's house is still a mess. Yeah, I mean, no surprise, honestly. What are you looking for? Which which were the, which of these guns is you, what are you looking for? We'll, we'll take the AUG. Alright, anything else cool in here? Oh, there's another GSH-18. No, it's all garbage. Uh, Every single weapon we've ever picked up is garbage. The, the, that thing, the, the, the horrible monstrosity that is that thing. Mm -hmm. Hey, Doc Mitchell. Oh, oof. We're uh, grabbing Yikes. some gear. <laughs> What the hell is going on in here? Well, I, uh, I, there might be some glitches because there's just so much stuff crammed in here. Um, Somebody should really organize this stuff. Doc! I feel like... Do Doc Mitchell's house is... Damn, you're fabulous. You look like Andrew WK, actually. I'm so fly. <gasps> you, you have it! <laughs> is everything fixed now? Maybe. <laughs> Can I see it? Can I see it? You wanna give it a try? <laughs> yeah. I actually hope it's working. Really. Come on. Play. Oh, it works! It works! The <laughs> only gun works! <laughs> oh, wait. What's going on? Oh, the charging handle's clipping through the back of the gun. Ah, so close! I'm ah, so close! We're, so, we're like right there! We're right there! <laughs> Whatever, I'm using it. I don't even care. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Find the mysterious man waiting near Randall and his associates. Yes, a mysterious man told us to go back to where it all began. Uh, they weren't referring to Good Springs. They wanted I, you to go back to Randall and associates. They wanted us to go back to the lobby of the Novak Hotel and do an advertisement for sugar bombs. No, that's way back. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Randall and associates. Yeah, this place has been defunct for quite some time. Hey, this guy's got a pit boy. He's wearing the same coat as Steven Randall. This place doesn't look like much, does it? I didn't believe this was Randall's old joint until I checked inside. Shame that it's been left abandoned. That painting is something to see. Oh, yeah, Saturn eating his son. Touch and I make stomp. <laughs> yeah. What? You have low intelligence. Oh, that's right. You make ask about me? <laughs> you make ask about me! You're special, aren't you? This day started out so well, and to find that you're like this... God hates me. <laughs> yes, he does. Wow, I'm I'm really dumb. What want? It's a matter of what I need, actually. My job is to relay a message from my supervisor, fellow by the name of Marco. <gasps> Marco? See, he's rather upset over his brother's death, and he wants to settle with you in Utah. It's a very long trip. Luckily, I know the way. I'll bring the snacks. Take me to the Mario or I stomp. You are tightly wound, you know that? Just relax, hero. You'll get there soon enough. First, you're going to help me with some business here. There are a few contacts here in the Mojave that I need to sort out on behalf of Marco's business interests. Funny thing is that there's some overlap with your past work. I managed to look through some of Randall's old records in the shack. To his credit, the man kept very meticulous records. He must have been quite the typist. He must have been quite the type because all he does is <laughs> sit there and type. Anyway, if you want to reach Utah, first you'll help me solve problems. Sort of like bounty hunting. Oh, and don't worry, you won't have to kill any women or children. Nothing that might compromise your code. All I want to do is kill children! <laughs> don't isolate that audio. I, I guess I don't really have a choice, do I? That depends. Everybody likes choices in life, so let me varnish my offer so there's an illusion of freedom. You can swallow your pride and help me, which will doubtlessly provide opportunities for enrichment, conversation, and all manner of excitement. Or, you can forgo my offer and fecklessly wander the wastes, wondering how you let a chance at Marco slip through your fingers. I'm sure some people would consider them equally valid choices. Oh, we can't do that. We have a vendetta to settle with Marco. I, do we? I know Marco's bad. Uh, yeah, he killed Randall's entire family. Oh, that's right. I helps. <laughs> I'm beginning to sense this was a terrible, terrible mistake. It was. Just stay close and don't run around carrying sharp objects, okay? All right, we'll see you, buddy. Hello. Welcome to Randall and Associates. I'm Stephen Randall, owner and operator. I assume you're here for the position, correct? I can begin the interview if you're ready. I only have one question. Are you willing to kill people for money? 
We're here to be hunting bounties. We want to kill people who deserve it for once. Whoa, 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 whoa! Who is... Oh, we got... Yeah, okay. Dragger? Named Raiders! Nice facial... Ow! Fuck! God. We're gonna drag you to the mud once we're done! All right, that's been handled. What do you got? 44 magnum rounds, bottle cap, displacer glove, his ear. Oh, he must be a bounty from Southern Mod. Uh, hey, Virgil. Ah, you made it. The fiends really know how to make a neighborhood their own, don't they? <laughs> yes. yes. Speaking of fiends, you remember Eileen, right? Uh, no. Slightly unbalanced gal who liked to sever men's genitalia. The bounty is on a fiend named Eileen. She's a vicious twat with a reputation for castrating male victims oh, that doesn't sound and pleasurable. consuming their flesh. Uh, Come on, Eileen! Me, 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 me. I got a chainsaw and these people are running right towards me! Yes, I think this was literally Eileen right here. You can tell because she's got a bunch of men's genitalia in her inventory. You can tell on account of the Eileen. Yeah, hard to forget. Way back when you knocked her off, NCR started telling people that it was finally safe to start moving in around here. Due to law and order. Well, as you probably know, the fiends were a bit more resilient than they had expected. No, oh, and it turns out Eileen wasn't even the worst one. Yay? Actually, she kept some of the more savage elements in line with the threat of emasculation. What a word, emasculation. Shout it to the heavens. Emasculation! Emasculation! After you disposed of Eileen, a nice gentleman named Troy took over her crew. He was no power player, but he certainly left his mark. Not long after the Owen family moved in here, Troy paid him a visit. Owen. Let's go inside and see his handiwork, shall we? Mike, remember how when we were here before and they were like, oh, you got to kill all the raiders and then all the rest of the raiders will just leave. And we kept telling them power vacuum. I remember. Power vacuum, power vacuum. Very power clearly, vacuum. Yes. Hey, look what happened. It was a power vacuum. Yes, it was. Uh, I've seen worse. You know, if I knew that I caused this, even in a crazy roundabout sort of way, that would just eat me up inside. Sort of awkward now. Don't even go there, you sick fuck. Wow, the mouth on you. I would use that old cliche about kissing your mother, but I don't know if you have one. You probably killed her. All that anger, white-hot rage driving you, it kind of protects you from this stuff, doesn't it? What? I'm so angry. Everything I do is right. <laughs> the fire will always burn out, my friend. When it does, all you'll have is unfinished missions, unpaid payback, and cold regret. And the swearing, is it really necessary? I found it a shallow substitute for substantive discourse, even when you're killing people. It's because I got a brain problem and I use curse words so that I can fucking think of fucking shit. Well, while I've got you good and primed to explode... Let's just point you towards Troy. On the way, think of something really crazy to say to him. My pineapples are made out of kumquats. I get really annoyed when people are like, you should feel bad. And it's like, I, like I don't feel bad all the time, every day of my life. Mm -hmm. I'm miserable. <laughs> you don't need to blame me for the power vacuum after we killed the raiders, but you... Nobody blames the Secret Service agent that accidentally shot JFK in the back of the head with an AR-15. Nobody blames him. Everybody blames Lee Harvey Oswald and Lyndon Baines Johnson for coming up with a plan to shoot the governor of Texas. Hello. I just love a quick jaunt through the ruins of a dead city. Makes me feel privileged to be alive. Maybe that's just me. Yeah, it's just you. I suppose we should make our way to Troy now. Seeing as to how you're a famous, cold-blooded, God-fearing bounty hunter... I'll follow your lead. One thing, though. Please don't cut off random fingers in the hopes of collecting a reward. After you. Oh, no finger time. That was just Randall that was obsessed with fingers. I don't care about fingers! Who the fuck are you? What the fuck are you doing here? Uh, hello? Troy, Troy, Troy. You I... have been a busy little boy, haven't you? Were you were supposed to follow my I lead! robbing and raping going on, yet you can't seem to return messages. Who the fuck... I'm about to light your ass up, cocksucker. You know who I am? You're Troy. I'm gonna smoke you, then fuck you right up the ass. No, you won't, Troy. Do you know who I work for? Gentleman by the name of Marco. He's very unhappy that you ignored his messages. 
Not good, Troy. Marco? He, he sent you? He's real! Oh, oh fuck. I, I didn't mean to ignore him. Shit. Shit just got fucked up. I was busy and... and... Shh, Troy. Calm yourself. No point in making a scene. Keep your dignity intact. You could have avoided this with timely correspondence. Oh, God. He, he sent you to kill me, didn't he? Please, 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 don't. I'll give you money, girls, anything. What does everyone just assume I would want a woman? I do prefer them, but you never know. Doesn't matter. Troy, this is a matter of... Balance. Balance. I can't go like this! Balance! Mama! Now, would you look at that? Troy, you went and pissed yourself. Would you relax? I'm not going to kill you. R really? Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'll do whatever you want. Just, just tell Marco. I'll do it. No, I won't kill you, Troy. This bounty hunter will. Oh, shit, Mama! Oh, I guess we have to kill him, then. <gasps> you could have done it, Virgil. I see you've taken out Troy, but don't you know there's gonna be something that fills this spot? Oh, power vacuums, etc. Power vacuums, oh, no, oh, like you killed a Crimson Caravan guard. I don't feel bad about killing this guy. I imagine if we kill enough people, no one will want to fill the power vacuum, cause they'll know what happens! Cause they keep dying! Virgil! Bravo, bravo. When Marco told me to bring you, I told him, well, I thought that it was crazy, but you know what? He was right. You're a real killer. Next stop, Freeside. We get to take in the splendor of Vegas' grand cesspool. Woohoo! I'll see you there. It's not that bad. This is not a bad setup here. I would live in here. It just needs to be really cleaned up. Yeah, Troy had the right idea, except for the murder and the everything else. Yeah. Yeah. The, I like the couch. The couch is good. The couch is good. I'm not a fan of beige, but I don't think it's ruined. <laughs> Just because it's beige. Just re upholster it. I won't be able to resist it. I have a gun. There's a. Why do you have five o'clock shadow, but boobies? Zach, did you know that women have facial hair? It's usually. Yes, crazy. I know that. Oh my god, don't you fucking. Don't you try to do that Horizon Zero Dawn bullshit on me. Yes, I know women have hair. Okay, okay. What the Sucks hell? Sucks to be you. Great, good, smart, thank you. That guy wasn't even oh, hostile! <laughs> you just gotta not lead him so much, uh, Hi. Oh, God. Benson! Die, ghost of Adam Benson! Die! Death to Adam Benson! Look! Look, here is the ghost! I've killed it! Oh. That which is dead may never die. And in strange eons, even death may die. Everything is broken. Broke! Okay, thank you for crashing the game, Adam. Oh, it didn't crash. Okay, we're soft locked. We'll just load. Oh, <laughs> I was saved right as I shot him in the face. Why? Oh, come on! <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa! If it isn't the consequences of my <laughs> actions once again. You like that? <laughs> Teach you to mess with me. You know, it's, it's pretty funny that we have a mod on installed. It spawns a guard exactly where the, the gang member spawns. Yep. Hey, you're the one who's been going around helping people around here, right? The king says to keep up the good work. and said to give you this. Fist of the North Arar? <laughs> it's a death pull gauntlet. Oh my god. I, I don't want this, but okay. <laughs> if it can be bought, it can be found at Mick and Ralph's. Oh, there he is. He's with the lady on the street corner. Hey, what's up? Ah, you're in feces vomit. That's the intoxicating aroma of Freeside. Also blood. It's like smelling hopelessness. If you're wondering, this fine establishment is known as Carl's Candy, with a K. Unfortunately, they do not offer confectionaries. No, Carl's is just one of many brothels in Freeside. But it should interest you for at least one reason. <laughs> no, not that one. You know, I've been coming to Freeside for ten years and I've never seen this. That comely young lady soliciting her services on the corner is known as Jill. Apparently she's the daughter of the late Charlie Halfcock. Oh gee, I wonder if it's this note. You're in my sights, run. Ow! Okay, so it's... Ow! <laughs> Charlie. 
Charlie, I'd like- What do you need? <laughs> your plan backfired spectacularly, but you're intent on doing this, so... See, Charlie's mercenary work provided for his daughter after his wife left him. With a name like Halfcock, you can imagine why she left. Single father with half a penis and a powerful rifle. What a story. But then, he met you. His kid, orphaned. Though only at the tender age of 16, Jill took it upon herself to make her way in the Mojave. With few marketable skills, Jill was soon forced to rely on her most valuable asset, her body. Her Royals Royce. Carl quickly scooped her up and made her his own. But it doesn't end there, friend. Carl doesn't just pimp out girls. He makes them utterly dependent through chem abuse. Pretty soon Jill was strung out on jet and completely broke. She became de facto property of Carl. Coincidentally, I have to deliver some news to Carl so we can kill two perverts with one stone. You better lead the way, though. My rugged looks are simply magnetic to females, and I don't want to be swarmed by hussies. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm sure. You need to find better examples. That is the story of literally every prostitute in all of the greater New Vegas area. Yeah. It's not a problem with us. It's more of a problem with society. Yes. A lack of a social safety net. Also, you were talking about her. She's literally right there. Oh, I just want to shoot you so bad. This is why I got kicked off the debate team. <laughs> I brought a gun. Every time, yeah. Hi. What do you need? Uh, oral sex. Damn. Shut the fuck up, bitch. You want another smack? Do you? When Carl says to suck his dick, you better motherfucking suck. Oh, I think I remember this guy. Tell me everything you know or I'll turn your face into a prophylactic. That's the thing that goes on penises. Oh, fuck. Yeah, here, everything I know, right in this list. Take it. Uh, do you mind? I am trying to work here. If you're looking for some tail, check downstairs. Ah, Carl, tell me, does it make you feel strong when you smack around starving hookers? This is a real man right here. Ooh, excuse me? <laughs> you gonna walk into my place and lay oh, down okay. attitude? Motherfucker, I will crack your skull open and shit in it. As much as I want to be moved by that arresting imagery, I need to get to the point, Carl. Do you remember the arrangement you had with Marco? Marco? Are you serious? That motherfucker ain't even real. So I took some guy's money and said I'd kick it up to Marco. What of it? It was a scam. No scam, Carl. You knowingly stole from one of Marco's associates, then went on to denounce the whole affair in public. Bad judgment, my boy. <laughs> you, you can't be serious. I was just joking with some boys in free... Everyone knows Marco isn't real. Right? I guess. Oh, fuck, man. You fucked up, boy. Oh, fuck. Holy shit, man. No joke, Carl. We'll make it quick. Or maybe not. It's really up to the discretion of my associate. Come on, dude, let's just talk about this, man. Shit, man. Ah! All right, Virgil, now chastise us for killing that guy. Hello. What do you need? Anal sex. <laughs> Bye. Hey. And that's how it's done, partner. Not your partner. You showed patience, but didn't hesitate when it was time to act. Well done. Just one more stop, and then we can begin the great trek. There's a little homestead I want you to see first, though. Here's the spot on your map. Oh no, is it gonna be- Oh, it's the Quigley residence. Oh no, Quigley. Remember when we killed Quigley? Your first target is Tom Quigley, a former NCR ranger who's rumored to be the best marksman in the Mojave. Oh. Quigley, Quigley, he's up on top of this hill. Quigley, I got him! Quigley. He's dead. I realized much later why his name is Tom Quigley. Why is that? Because Tom Selleck played the character of Quigley in the movie Quigley Down Under. Oh. Yeah, that's why he's Tom Quigley. Okay. That's also why he uses a 4570 government. If Tom hadn't fired on us first, we could have talked him down. But yeah. I always try to, like, talk to them first. Yeah, sometimes we do murder them in cold blood after they were very peaceful. But other but times... We always give them a chance. I always try to give them a chance. And then sometimes you go up to them and you're like, Hey, uh, I'm here to collect a bounty on your head. And they're like, Fuck you, motherfucker. Shove a banana up your ass and <laughs> jump off a pier. Alright, I'm ready for you to berate me about what I did to Quigley. 
This fine residence is the home of Dana Quigley, widow of the late Tom Quigley. You remember him, right? Though an inveterate womanizer and a madman, Ranger Quigley still sent proceeds from his caravan robberies to his family. When his mischief caught up with him, Mrs. Quigley found herself destitute and struggled to provide for three children. On the verge of starvation and homelessness, Mrs. Quigley soon received an offer from a businessman. In exchange for a hefty sum, he would seize Mrs. Quigley's daughter and sell her to Kaiser's Legion. Damn. Wow. She accepted the offer. While the initial windfall tided them over for a spell, the Quigley residence has fallen in hard times once again. Crop failures and whatnot. Already maddened with regret over her daughter's fate, now Mrs. Quigley must decide how to proceed. Sell the farm? Prostitute herself? Sell a child? Again? The dilemmas of the wasteland. Why don't we pay her a visit? You should have plenty to talk about. <laughs> I've had about enough of your ghost of Christmas past bullshit. Regardless, I'll go talk to her. Have I struck a nerve? I knew you were angry, but wow. Look at that vein just throbbing. I'm going to guess you have high blood pressure. Actually, my blood pressure is fine. I just went to the doctor recently. Thank you very much. Also, apparently I have very good cholesterol. Let's go help this old bag, whether she likes it or not. I like how he's trying to make me feel bad about this woman that sold her daughter into slavery. She gave up one of her children so her other children could live. It's not an easy decision to make. It was a real Sophie's choice. Hello, old hag. Jeez. Can I help you? I'm just passing through. Is there anything I can do to help? Unless you got a golden goose, there's nothing. Damn fat cats in town are about to push me off my land. Uh, here's 2,000 caps. I, I don't know what to say. Wait, did the hostlers put you up to this? You don't look rich. How did you get that kind of cash? <laughs> Is this a con? Backhanded compliment. <laughs> you, you don't look rich. Do you want help or not? Shut up and take my money! Well, if you're going to take that kind of approach, you can just walk on out of here. Oh, wow, she didn't want the money. All right, have fun selling your children into slavery. How are you today? I am just fine. I'm the guy that's going to kill your mother. <laughs> wow. You actually surprised me that time. <laughs> I am impressed. <laughs> you have a cold, cold heart, my friend. Yes, I do. There's more to you than I realize. And ask if you feel responsible, but I know you don't care. Yep. She might as well be a pesky bug or some other insignificant creature. Just like you. I don't like to issue predictions, but Marco might just have a use for you. Strange partnership it would be. But who's to say it wouldn't work? Oh, looks like we've come back in time because we're not like that monster Marco. Yeah. Damn fat cats in town are about to push me off my land. Fat cats? Give me their names and all of your problems will go away. What? No. It's... It, the Burrowcrats. Someone else would just take their place. You must be crazy. I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm the bounty hunter who- Why would I say that? Why would I tell her I'm the bounty hunter that <laughs> killed your husband? That'd be like being named after a city in New York and saying that we're the ones that poisoned Freeside. So you're the one? The one who killed my Tom? Yes. Get out! Right now! Get out and take your blood money, you piece of shit! Get out now! How dare you call me a piece of shit! <laughs> Woman! Can I help you? <laughs> Just call her woman. So she won't do the shut up and take my money. She won't do this one. Take this money or I'm going to deposit your heart to the first bank of hell. Oh, Christ almighty, anything you say. We are so very thankful. No questions, none whatsoever. Bless you, bless you, bless you. You're welcome. <laughs> Using fear to do good. I can almost get behind that. I never realized how important inflection is to get the full effect. I'll work on that. You can tell yourself that she's got the cap, so it makes things right. But deep down, that demon whispers the truth. You caused this. If all my pestering is starting to bother you, take heart. We're nearing the end of the line. Finally. We've got a date with some fancy legionary near Cottonwood Cove. See you there. Bye. Give me those 2,000 caps back. <laughs> Cottonwood Cove is still a little irradiated, but we made it safe and sound. Yes, we did. This nice little cavern is the temporary home of one Marcus Scribonius Libodrusus. What? An important man given his responsibility. Slaves. That was a mouthful. Unbeknownst to his comrades, Drusus has been engaged with 
unsavory elements that happen to be in the employ of Marco. Lining your pockets is a capital offense in Kaiser's Legion, along with everything else. But corruption yeah. makes it more capital? Recently, Drusus has had second thoughts about his past exchanges. So it's high time he's reminded of his obligations. And we're going to remind him, are we? Looks more like an anthill than a cow. Yeah, this is an anthill, my guy. Oh, am I, are you going to make me feel bad about killing an ant next? Decantas? Centurions? Decan... Ha 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 ha! Who dares intrude in my quarters? Me! Name yourselves. Not a polite reception, I must say. Is the hammer necessary? I think you're making my friend nervous. By Mars, if you don't identify yourself, I'll bludgeon you and that other renegade into a bloody pulp. I go by Virgil, but that's not really germane to the discussion. See, Drusus, I answer to a certain Marco. You might have heard of him. You listen, profligate. I am done dealing with Marco or his lackeys. I do not answer to lawless scum. Scum? That's harsh, Drusus. Harsh. You might not dare to speak with us now, but I seem to recall you happy to accept our captives a few months ago. I... I can't. The speculators are investigating. If they know I dealt speculators. with you, I'll be scourged and crucified like a low criminal. But you are a criminal. You should have embraced it. Believe me, life is so much simpler and fulfilling. Better than all this stilted soldiering. I will never yield. Oh, so you're gonna do that one. Do you feel bad about that? That man had a mother. A mother who loved to read to him when he was a little boy. She read him his favorite books, like Horton Hears a Who and Alexander and the Terrible, Awful, No Good, Very Bad Day. Those were his two favorite books when he was a child. I, I'm bringing this up now because uh, my mom read that book to me, and then it, occasionally when I was having really bad depressive episodes, she would be like, you're just having a terrible, awful, no good, very bad day. And it really diminished how I was feeling, and it made me feel terrible. I think you need therapy. Requies caught in pake, Drusus. Latin! He couldn't accept the change rendered by his choices. Now, where have I heard that before? If you're poised to lose some witty retort or just good old-fashioned vitriol, save it for just a touch longer. My business here is settled, so I must depart for Frosto. If you wish to join me, go to the Northern Passage and we'll make final preparations. Oh, and please leave any accompanying rabble here in the Mojave. Marco instructed me to bring you and no one else. See you there. I'm still coming. Can't stop me. What's he going to do? Kill us? Because that's worked so well every other time. I cannot wait to see Marco and then just, just kill him and then reload the save and then kill him and then reload the save and then kill him. Oh, <laughs> uh, you're not even going to get a, give him a chance to speak. Nope. Nope. Not even. Yeah, Northern Passage. Are we going back to Zion? Is that where Marco's been hiding? Has he been in Utah this whole time? Yes. Yes. Where gets Piss Boy? I got this Pip Boy as a child when I was growing up in a vault. You like the light, don't you? No, don't touch it. You've got your own. Tell me about Mario, Virgil! It's... It's Marco. With a K. Understand? Marco. He's a bad, bad man. He might hurt you. You has bad like Mario? Marco. Oh, to hell with it. <laughs> yes, I has the bad. I has all the bad in the world. God in heaven, why did I come here? <laughs> you likes the bad? Yes, the bad is good. I mean, shit. I mean, bad is relative. You might think eating feces is good, but to me, it's bad. Understand? No? Great. <laughs> now you have a suddenly eloquent sense. Is this all about... Uh, his uh, brother please. Mario? Uh, is this all about Sergio? I have a hard time believing that Marco was close to his brother. Why wouldn't it be about Sergio? Even bad men love their brothers. You might say their mutual interests made them closer. You're not completely off base, though. Before Sergio was killed, Marco had already heard some of the stories coming out of the Mojave. People talked about some courier who was all but unstoppable. A veritable force of nature by all accounts. That didn't sit well with Marco. 
I cringe internally when people refer to me as some courier or the courier now. Do you get tired of that title? It's not very imposing, you know? Maybe that's the beauty of it. Nobody expects to be down by a messenger. Hey, here's your letter. Oh, and you're dead. Do you pronounce it courier or courier? Courier. Probably doesn't matter. Tomato, tomato. Pineapple, pineapple. You can call me whatever you want as long as it's not late for dinner. You've been riding high since you ducked the Reaper. Maybe too high. If you aren't careful, you'll get a nasty lesson in mortality soon enough. Ooh, is that a threat? <laughs> what Mario sends you? <laughs> Marco sent me to talk with other men to make money. You understand money? No? Green paper with faces? <laughs> yeah, that stuff. No, we use caps. Risks are unavoidable. I'll adapt and overcome, even in Utah. To your credit, you are adaptable. Some things can't be accounted for, though. <laughs> when you taste Marco's vengeance, it will cut you off at the knees. How you talk, Mario? It's Marco. I talked to Marco a long time ago when we met. He helped me survive. We killed the really bad men, then ate big steaks. You grow in wallet? A vault. You know, one of the big buildings underground. When I was 13, the water chip gave out. So we had to make contact with the outside. Me have pew pew! Me make pew pew go pew! Me shoot that thing! Me, I'm very hurt. Me take that! Sun cook face! <laughs> Yeah, Virgil- Ooh, uh, the firing pin- Apparently I jammed a coin in the back of my Mateba. <laughs> Alright. That was- Oh, it, 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 right. it, fell, it fell out. Okay, okay. Yes? I has PP, we go! Christ, this is gonna be a long trip. <laughs> yes! <laughs> I like to imagine he's taking us on a trip and we're just dicking around in the back seat. <laughs> <laughs> just sitting in the back going, Hey! Virgil, you want to hear most annoying sound in the world? <laughs> Bounties three, all oh yeah. It's a nice long walk to Frost Hill, so pay attention and you might learn something. No! <laughs> Over the years, travelers have told stories of a man in black, the most dangerous killer alive, from somewhere far to the east. For you, he was merely a name. Marco. Polo! He would have remained just that, if not for a chain of events after you emerged from the grave. Me emerge from gravy! You squared off with the Mojave's worst, and prevailed. Some began to speak of you as a living legend of the wasteland. None of this would have mattered until you met a man named Sergio, and killed him. Then, you had Marco's full attention. When he heard about his brother's death, he sent me to find you, to bring you to him so that you could settle this. Now there will be a grim meeting between you and the man in black, after which only one legend will endure. We're gonna square off against Marco, hell yeah. Well, we made it. Don't you love that clean mountain air? Breathe it in, savor it. Couldn't you just drink it like boo? Do you have anything you want me to relay to Marco? <laughs> I tell story. Okay. One time, there's small rock. Small rock wants to be big rock, but rock cannot get big. Rock only gets small. This how geology work. <laughs> Tell Mario I come. You know, I'm not even going to bother correcting you. I'll tell Mario that you come. You've successfully stultified <laughs> me during our travels. <laughs> Goodbye, Vagisil. <laughs> I will crack- As hey. much as I want to be moved by that arresting imagery, I need to get to the point, Carl. Gosh, you really have no respect for the power of presentation, do you? If I don't deliver my fearsome monologues, this whole legend thing withers and dies. Marco would be rather displeased by that prospect. Next time, would you please be so kind as to wait for my cue? Thanks. <laughs>